Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now this is the one hour chart of the SSE composite. This is the Shanghai Stock Exchange. If you remember, uh, I pointed out back when it had corrected back down to around 2000 or so that uh, my projection was that uh, this Chinese stock market was going to explode. It has exploded. I also recently projected it would correct maybe a little bit and then come right back up. I have no doubt that this is going to go back into new highs. So if we look at the long term, you can see here on the weekly chart, um, people are saying, well, it's a bubble. No, it's not. Um, you can see right there, there's the breakout at 33, um, 3300. So um, it's just getting going really. And like I said before, if you can own the Chinese stocks in Chinese Yuan, you're going to be a very wealthy person. Um, but let's get to the heart of some of these stories here. Um, it's really crazy what you see in the, the U.S. media um, about China. Um, but before we do that, I want to go to a um, story about the Federal Reserve. Now, they trotted out another Fed head. This is the San Francisco Fed head. This is the same name as the Shadow Stats guy, John Williams. Let's listen to him real quick. Will they or won't they? It's the biggest parlor game on Wall Street. Will the Fed raise rates this year or remain at zero into 2016? Joining me now is someone who should have a better answer and better insight. <laughs> should have a better answer. Question. John yeah, Williams, should. president of the San Francisco Fed and a voting member of the Federal Open Market Committee. Look at this uh, joker. So, President Williams, earlier this year you were quoted as saying, quote, I see no reason whatsoever to rush to tightening. Is that still your view? Yes, it is. I think we, the decisions we make around monetary policy, you know, we obviously want to watch the data, understand what the data is telling us about the economic outlook, what's the data telling us about where we are in terms of our objectives of maximum employment and price stability, uh, and what the risks are around that. So I don't, I don't feel a rush to act, but at the same time, I do think we have to uh, act appropriately, given at, at some point later this year, I, is act my forecast, uh, based on, you know, how much the data have improved and the fact that the economy is on a much better uh, much better condition than it has been the last few years. So, okay, so you, you do think, as we sit here today, that the first rate hike will be sometime this year? My own view is that, you know, based on the progress we've made on our employment mandate, unemployment is now 5.4 percent. It's awfully close to most economists' view of, a view of what fu full employment means. And the fact that inflation has stabilized, and I think we'll be moving back towards 2 percent. This kind of stumbling around his words, kind of like Bernanke did, uh, getting a little bit nervous especially when he used the term full employment. Now, this is this is just a bunch of bunk. Um, let me first show you a chart here that I, I, I compiled that was... Um, uh, it is a comparison of the U.S. Fed funds rate to the U.S. unemployment rate. Now, I took this from Trading Economics. I took it back to 1971, so you can see that the, the charts are actually... Um, lined up perfectly for the time frames. So you can see that in the past, pretty much the, the Fed funds rate, well, there's a lot of information here. I mean, you can analyze this series for a long time, but the general pattern is that they raise interest rates and uh, then when unemployment starts to go up, then they start to cut. And... Uh, uh, you can see the funds rate going up here and uh, unemployment still going down. So you had a lot of instances where once unemployment started to go down, um, then they start to raise that rate. So, for example, you can take, um, let's say, let's look at this 2000 recession here. You can see that the Fed funds rate was cut um, and then... Uh, the unemployment rate finally topped, you know, stopped rising. And then just as soon, soon after that, they started raising rates. That's generally the pattern. Uh, there is some connection between the unemployment rate and the Fed funds rate, but it's not what this latest Fed head is saying. Um, and I'm going to show you in the statistics the statistics are very hard to 
um, parse because there's so much lying going on. And, uh, but I'm going to show you in the statistics of the actual figure that we can look at um, that will give us a real idea. Now we, we have the labor force participation rate, but I'm going to look at um, people not in the labor force. So let's, um, but let's look at this this last section here. You can see that interest rates went down to zero. And uh, here is the dropping in the unemployment rate. This is the official unemployment rate. So obviously the question one would ask is in the past, as soon as the unemployment rate started dropping, um, they fairly soon after that, they started raising rates. Uh, now this guy is saying they're going to raise rates sometime in the fall. Well, they they said they were going to raise them in the spring. Um, n next year, the year after, who knows? So the economy is completely broken. You can see that based on past precedent, um, these guys are in completely new territory. They're at zero interest rates, and uh, the unemployment rate supposedly is falling, but they're afraid to raise rates. So... Let's look at some stories here that came out about China because this is really important because the, the economists, the media, and the people who are in charge of the Western governments are constantly bashing China. I know this is the theme. It's like a broken record that I bring up, but it's so ridiculous. You're going to see when I look at these trading economics statistics, you're going to see how utterly absurd it is um, what they're saying about China. So now a lot of these articles that are about China, they don't tell you what the facts are. They just kind of say, well, it's this or it's that. Uh, oh, things are bad in China. They don't tell you what their interest rate is. They don't tell you what their unemployment rate is. They just throw out a bunch of uh, FUD. So let's look at this article. This is China rate cut. How bad are things getting? China's third interest rate cut in six months has spurred concerns the mainland's economic slowdown is hitting where it hurts the labor market. Quote, the PBOC move validates investors' assumptions that subpar economic performance will be tolerated by the government only up to a point where it does not pose a serious threat to employment. The People's Bank of China reduced both the benchmark lending and deposit rate by 25 basis points to 5.1% and 2.25%. Wouldn't you like to be able to get those interest rates? No, you, you have interest rates stuck at zero. In response to weaker than expected economic activity, which has raised concerns at the government's annual gross domestic product, target of around 7% could be at risk. So they're growing at 7% and and the big fear is that they might fall below 7%. Oh, heaven forbid. We haven't seen 7% as long as anyone can remember. Here's another one. This is Bloomberg. China's baby steps towards economic disaster. The longer China's economy stalls, the lonelier Zhao Yixuan, governor of People's Bank of China, is certain to get. There's simply no playbook for a central banker facing so many competing challenges deflation, excessive debt, chaotic global financial markets, and vested interests resisting reform. Zhao seems to have little choice but to make, make things up as he goes along. But if Zhao is interested in consulting a cautionary tale, he might consider the decisions made by policymakers in Japan in 1998 when that country was on the precipice of deflation and bore an eerie resemblance to China's present situation. Japan's deflationary slide was triggered by a massive debt buildup, a graying population, and rigid industrial policies. If that sounds familiar to China watchers, it should. Unfortunately, Zhao seems to seems committed to repeating the mistakes made by Masari Hayami, the former governor of Bank of Japan, and it goes on and on. More China bashing. So, I wanted to show you. Now, I showed you that image of how bad off the United States is. We are in such a bad situation. You can see that's flatline right there. That's dead. That's no heart rate. And uh, you can see their fake unemployment rate 
is continuing to fall, yet they're afraid to raise rates. Why don't they raise rates? You can see in the past, I showed you uh, right here when you draw the parallels. As soon as the unemployment rate started to fall significantly, they went ahead and started to notch up rates. Um, not this time. Now, let's look at these trading economic stats, the real stats about employment. So here is a data series that I chose here. This one is unemployed persons. So this is a raw number. This is not a percentage because we know that the Fed manipulates the percentages. So what I chose to look at here was a raw number. Now you can pull it back as far as you want. We can pull it all the way back to 1950 if we want to. And you can see that same pattern that we're looking at. But here is the number of unemployed persons in the United States. Okay. That's a raw number. And you can see down here the definition. In the United States, unemployed persons are individuals who are without a job and actively seek work. Okay, that's a pretty clear definition. Now, we're not certain how they calculate that, but we'll just take that as it is. Now, this comparison, I started to do this comparison when I was looking at a labor force participation rate because, of course, we have that stat here, labor force participation rate, and we know that that's the big giveaway that they're lying about unemployment. Unfortunately, we didn't have a late, we don't have a labor force participation rate statistic in China in trading economics, but we do have unemployed persons. So keep this figure in mind. In the United States, we have 8,549,000, ,000, okay? So that's going to be 8.5 million unemployed persons. That's what they're telling us. Again, these are people, individuals who are without a job and actively seeking to work. Now, let's look at China. Here's China's unemployed persons. The number of unemployed persons in China remained unchanged at 952,000. 952,000 United States, 8,549,000. Okay, you see that? They're comparable. Tenfold. The United States has 10 times the number of unemployed persons. Look at China's definition. In China, unemployed persons are individuals who are without a job and actively seeking to work. So China has more than three times the population of the United States, and yet their unemployed persons is one-tenth. Does that mean the United States has 30 times the unemployment that China has? I think it does. Now, you can see that that's rising, but it's rising from virtually nothing. Think about this. You have a, a country with a billion people and only a million people or so can't find jobs. And then you have a country with 300 million people and they admit that 9 million of them cannot find jobs. But we know they're lying about that. So even based on these simple statistics, you can see that China is in a much, much better situation. Now you think about the fact that interest rates in China are 5%. In the US, they're zero. In China, the people who can't find jobs are one in a thousand. In the United States, they're admittedly uh, one in 10 or something like that. I'm not sure what the figure is. So when you think about these stories, you know, talk about the pot calling the kettle black. It is so ridiculous to have these fed heads, China bashers, um, just utterly worthless economists like this 
Will John it Williams makes sense, uh, sometime later this year uh, to uh, start raising rates? But that's going to be driven by the data, and also importantly, it's not just about when we raise rates; it's also what do we do after that. And I think, you know, my own view is that any rate increases we start uh, later this year uh, will be gradual and uh, will reflect the fact that this economy is it's doing a lot better. Uh, but uh, we still need monetary accommodation. Yeah, we got to be hemming and hawing. Uh, I mean, the facts are absolutely undeniable. The Chinese stock market is exploding. It should be exploding. Um, they have normalized interest rates. They have no debt. They have virtually no unemployment. The United States, on the other hand, has zero interest rates. We have almost 100 million people now that are not participating in the labor force. We have a ridiculous anywhere from 10 to 30-fold uh number of unemployed persons uh, compared to China based on the employed persons rate. So uh, the fact that U.S. economists would bash China is absolutely absurd. It Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. It is beyond that. And we'll talk to you next time.